Hello, welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm an illustrator and creative based on the South Coast, and this is the first video I've done with a voiceover. I've recorded this once already, and I'm doing it again, because I sounded like I was just talking from a script, so I'm going to try and be a bit more relaxed on this one, and hopefully as I do more videos, I'll get better at it. So today I'm doing a sort of speed paint, but with ink. So you can see here I'm using ink and just creating a, a spread in my sketchbook. But what I wanted to talk about today is something that can be kind of controversial in the art world, and that's using references. A lot of artists swear by the idea that using references in art makes you not a real artist. And when I was growing up in my early teens, I felt like I couldn't draw or become successful because I couldn't draw the things that were in my head. And the idea that you can't be a successful artist when using references is absolutely nonsense. And it kind of makes me sad when I think about past me feeling like that. And also the younger artists today, because I don't, I don't want anyone to think that using references makes you a bad artist, because it absolutely doesn't. Using references is the only way to practice, really. When you study art, whether you use photos or are doing real life studies, it's one of the first things that you do when you're in an art class. They want you to copy from what you're seeing, and that's basically using a reference. Without them, they remind me of those funny old medieval paintings where they paint a cat, but they've obviously not seen one in their life. Now, I do think that there's a difference between copying and referencing. Tracing over an image and copying an already created piece of art is different to using a photo as a reference. One thing to note here is about copyright. Just because an image is on the internet doesn't mean it can be directly copied and created as an artwork to sell. I think for personal sketchbook work, and I certainly do this a lot in mine, um, I think that's absolutely fine because that's for your eyes only and you're not going to try and sell that. Whereas if it's for a print for your shop, then that doesn't belong to you, just because you've created an artwork from it. I also think that if you do post it online and on social media, whether it's in your sketchbook or not, you should keep a note of where your reference is coming from. So at least keep a copy or a location so you know where the original source is. And as a little side note here, Pinterest isn't a valid image source, so you should always try and click through and find where it's actually come from. A good way to find a reference that you can actually use is to look for the Creative Commons license. So there are four different types of this, um, with some allowing the images to be used for personal use and not commercial purposes, and then some that allow you to use them as long as attribution is given. I think all current licenses apart from one means you have to attribute the original author. So if you're looking for images that are free to use and don't need that, I use websites called Unsplash and Pexels, which have a lot of diverse images and you can use them and edit them and you don't have a legal requirement to link back. So other sources used for reference images are places like Google and Pinterest and even Instagram if you save the images into your bookmarks. Um, again, I think that's fine for personal use and sketchbook work, but you do have to be careful if it's clearly a direct copy and you're going to be using it for commercial use, so if you're selling it as a print. So what some artists do is they use multiple reference photos of the subject and merge them together. They'll take elements from one and then another bit from another and create a drawing from that. So it's not a direct copy of just one image and it can't be linked back to that single photo. Um, and I think that's quite a good way to use multiple reference photos to create your own sort of thing. And then an even better way to find reference photos is to actually take your own. So you can set up your own little scenes for things like still lives, or you can use a self timer to create poses of your own body to copy from. Using holiday photos, I do that a lot uh, for my references because it's nice to live relive the memories, but it's also really good practice and I know that the reference and the art is all mine. So live drawing is an excellent way to practice and a good source of reference. There's a website called Croquet Cafe which is free and that's a model resource if you'd like to study, practice or reference the human form. So here are a couple of my favourite reference books. 
A lot of my art at the moment is very nature-based, so they focus on wildlife, animals, flora and insects. The first of these books by Reader's Digest, which I borrowed from my dad. I've always loved these ever since I was little, because they've got really nice illustrations in, they're kind of like watercolour, but they also provide enough detail that I can reference them myself. So this next book is called A Victorian Flower Album, which I think I picked up from a car boot. It's not the most precise in terms of referencing specific flowers, but the style's really nice and there's some handwritten annotations in the book. Next up are these Observer's books. You might be familiar with these because they're quite popular. If you take off the book jacket, they have these lovely colours underneath. Some of them are in black and white, some of them are in colour depending on when they were published. There's a huge range in the series, and versions published later than this have an even more extensive list to choose from. I picked these up in antique shops and vintage markets, but you can also get them in charity shops, usually for between two and four pound a pop, depending on how rare the actual book is. And then finally, a couple of little books that I've added to my collection, which I both got from charity shops. This one's more used for my journals because it's falling apart anyway, but I love the birds and there are some good photographs to reference here. Then there's this insect book which has lots of information and some good scientific illustrations as well as plenty of colour. I hope you enjoyed watching me ink this little woodland scene. The mushrooms and fungi were referenced from a few photos on Pinterest and the birds and flowers were referenced from the Reader's Digest books I talked about earlier. I didn't use a pencil sketch on this one so I was actually quite surprised at how well it worked out because usually I'll do a rough sketch and flesh out the layout first. You can see I mix and match the flowers and the animals so the layout is across the page and can't be tied to one sole image, so I've used a variety of different references here. You can find the finished image of this on my Instagram if you fancy following me over there, I'll leave a link down below in the description. My YouTube channel is brand new so it means a lot if you've watched this whole way through, and it would make my day if you wanted to subscribe to see more. Let me know what you thought of this and if the audio quality is okay. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. See you later.